there's a shift occurring in the heart of humanity, and it's not optional. It's a shift from what I call tchotchke consciousness to the paradigm of the soul. Tchotchke is an old Yiddish term that refers to little things, things that we collect, that we buy with our hard-earned money, put on our shelves to collect dust. And what possesses us to do so, God only knows. But what I've discovered in my life is that anything has the capability of transforming into tchotchke. Let's take, for example, shoes. My son is 12 years old and he has approximately 20 pairs of shoes. He's a shoe collector. Now here's a test to see if any of your shoes have made the transition from shoe to tchotchke. Have you ever tripped over your own shoes? If you answer yes to this question, you just tripped over shoe You see, shoes were created and designed to help us walk. If we're tripping on them, we've fallen over tchotchke consciousness. And so this past year, I took my son, who loves his shoes, on a medical mission to Zimbabwe. And one day during a break, I went to the head nurse of this hospital, and her name is Gogo. Now, Gogo actually means great mother, and she is the embodiment of this energy. One day I said to her, I said, Gogo, how do you stay so positive in a world that's so oppressed here in Zimbabwe? And she said to me, referring to the people she works for at this hospital, she said to me, I say to them, I don't work for you. You don't pay me enough. You don't give me no benefits, but I don't care. Because I don't work for you. I work for love. Every day when I wake up, I say, love, what would you have me do today, love? Where would you have me go today, love? What would you have me be today, love? And then everything is good, good, good. And I am happy, happy, happy because I work for love. So that, that's my friend Gogo. So I went to Gogo with my son CJ, a soccer ball, and a suitcase full of shoes that people had donated to us to give away. And I said to Gogo, I said, how much love can we spread today with a soccer ball and these shoes? And she said, oh, love more. I said, yes, we would like to love more. And she said, you must go to love more. I said, it's a place? She said, yes, go to love more. And you will love more. And so we did. We went to a house called Love More. And we knocked on the door and the broken windows shook as we were welcomed into the living room of love more where 12 boys laid on the ground none of which had shoes many didn't have a shirt most of which had lost their parents to aids and my son reached into a bag and pulled out a soccer ball but he might as well have pulled out Christmas Eve, New Year's Day, and the 4th of July rolled into one because when the kids saw the soccer ball, they literally jumped to their feet and began to sing and dance the praises of a soccer ball. But then we opened our suitcase full of shoes and it was as if a light began to emanate from the center of this room, this place called Lovemore, these children. And it was like a fantasy come true for my son because all of a sudden it was like he was a shoe salesman at a Nordstrom's in a country where they had no shoes. So he was going crazy. He could fit these kids just by looking at their feet. He was going through the suitcase. Ah, oh, these are for you. Bang. These for you. Bam. These for you. Bam. And the kids are doing the shoe dance. We got shoes. We got shoes. And the last kid, we come to the last kid. He's like over six feet tall, 13 years old with feet to match. And my son's looking through the suitcase. I'm, I'm sure we have shoes for you. I know we do. We brought so many shoes. I'm sure I can find some. He's looking through the suitcase, rummaging through the sides, all over. I, I know we have a shoe for you. Just, just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. I'll find a shoe. I had to come and intervene. I walked over. I said, CJ, stop it. Stop. We don't have shoes for this boy. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. We don't have any shoes that will fit you. And this boy, he looked at us and he said, it's okay, but 
my son put his head in his hands and then put his face in the suitcase. And he just began to cry because he didn't understand why is there a place where kids don't have shoes? Why is there a place where kids don't have a shirt? But you see, he was making the transition, the shift from tchotchke consciousness to the paradigm of the soul. And minutes later, I saw him wipe the tears from his eyes and take this boy down the hall of Lovemore. And when they came back, they were both grinning from ear to ear. Because when they came back, it was my son who was barefoot. And it was my son without a shirt because he had given them to this other boy. But I don't know if my son had ever been happier because now he was wearing something of more value than you could buy at any Nordstrom's or any store. He was wearing on his heart love more. You see, there was a time when we thought we worked for tchotchke. But we never did. And so let's take a lesson from my friend Gogo. Because the truth is, we always have and we always will.